Hello, I'd like to talk about uh, Alfred Morgan's Foy's first book of radio and electronics, specifically the uh, the shortwave and broadcast band Regen that's featured in the book. This particular radio is very interesting to people and I know when I got a hold of this book back in middle school in the early 70s this was the project that drew my attention. Now, any one tube regenerative receiver is quite simple in design. You have to collect the parts as you can see the front panel is uh, made of masonite and in my case I actually just bought a clipboard and fashioned the uh, the front panel out of the clipboard. The front panel, we have the vernier dial we have the regeneration control which is also the filament on off two more clips where you attach your high impedance headphones and you have a double trimmer that connects you to the antenna These are the headphones, uh, typical 2000 ohm headphones, high impedance. And with this receiver and the headphones and a good antenna, you can pick up many broadcast stations and shortwave stations. WGN Northwestern hangs on. They beat number 24, Illinois. Against the main Black Bears. Uh, for the last few years, it's been over the Verizon Wire. Your luck, the guards is a smart decision, one you can still make. Mina and the expressway is southbound. We're okay until you get down to Seven Hill, and we're starting. He will be um, the Messiah, son of David, is what I just said. Um, they know that, but the fact Identify some of the components in the uh, the one tube regenerative. First, we've got the uh, the main tuning variable. Down here, we have the 0025 bypass capacitor. Here's the tube socket, which is uh, suspended off the uh, the wooden chassis with some wood screws and some standoffs that have been drilled out the grid leak resistor which is a 2.2 meg the 100 picofarad grid leak capacitor this is the homemade radio frequency choke uh, basically it's a sewing bobbin with as much uh, number 33 or smaller wire wound on it as possible here's the plug-in coil with the plug-in coil socket and the fine stock clips on the rear the original uh, book 1954 and, uh, and uh, earlier books on radio used battery tubes like the Type 30, the 1H4 and the 1G4 triodes. Uh, these would operate on a, a volt and a half dry cell and only uh, drew about 60 uh, milliamps of current. The 6BF6, uh, which is uh, this small tube, it actually is a 6.3 volt tube that's designed for AC operation so it draws quite a bit of current, 6.3 volts at 300 milliamps. Ordinary disc ceramic capacitors will work just fine. For the uh, 0.0025 RF bypass capacitor, you can uh, also use a ceramic capacitor or a mylar capacitor. You can also use a paper capacitor. This is a Black Beauty uh, paper capacitor. The values are not critical at all. 
uh, for that bypass capacitor, the 0025 could be anything from, oh, uh, probably a 680 puff up to uh, a 001, uh, as high as perhaps a 005 capacitor, and it would work just as just well. Just a, a quick discussion about the uh, plug-in coil situation with this receiver. Two coils are specified in the book, an A coil and a B coil. Uh, the A coil has 150 turns on the primary and a 45 turn tickler. Now that's a, uh, that's a big coil and that's going to put you well below the broadcast band. Um, I found that uh, that really is too many turns for the tickler and I cut that down to about 20 turns and found that it uh, goes into regeneration a little bit better. But that coil is going to put you below the broadcast band. A broadcast band coil is going to look more like this. It's going to probably have about 80 turns on it uh, with a uh, about a uh, 10 or 15 turn for, for the tickler. If you want to cover a 75 meter, 80 meter band, you're going to need something like this with probably 20 or 25 turns with 4 or 5 turns on the tickler. So this gives you an idea of what the uh, coils are going to look like for the receiver. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, power for the uh, for the one tube regenerative. Um, the regen control also contains an on-off switch that switches the A voltage, which is the filament voltage. The reason that uh, we want to switch the A voltage is because uh, the radio was originally designed to work with battery power both on the filament and on the B plus. And uh, if you do want to run it on batteries, that's uh, perfectly acceptable. Uh, with the 300 mil draw, though, your double A's aren't going to last forever. You perhaps get a couple months of use out of uh, four double A's, giving you six volts. With four D cells, I think uh, you'd have a, a power supply as long as you don't uh, forget and leave the thing on that would last you uh, a year or two. How many 9 volt batteries in series? Um, originally, uh, there was a, a call for a, a 67 uh, uh, to a 90 volt B battery for the receiver. So that would take quite a few of these 9 volt cells in series. The radio will actually regenerate on as little as 3 of the 9 volts in series, but because it's a 1 tube receiver, we need to have as much gain as possible for the headphones. So even though the receiver might go into regeneration much smoother with only 24 or 27 volts on it, it will certainly work a lot better with 50 or 60 volts on the plate. So it's a compromise between having good smooth regeneration control and enough audio output. Uh, the book also talks about running the uh, receiver on AC. Notice I have the A and the B- minus connected together with this jumper. That means that one side of the filament has been grounded. I run my receiver on 6 volts DC regulated. If you want to run it on AC power, you could use a, uh, a 6.3 volt filament transformer like this. Typically, you attach the filament transformer between the A terminals and you ground only the center tap of the filament transformer to the B-. In the next video, I want to talk about some small errors that occur in the book and some ways that we can improve this receiver. So in part two, we're going to actually take this receiver apart and we're going to put it back together again and get some really high performance out of it.